Okay, so part of my new background series is a, I wanted to do like a frame background. So Joanna Basford's Ivy and the Inky Butterfly is a perfect book for this exercise because sh her book is filled with frame pages. And what I mean by this is usually they're filigree pages um, with borders and text in the middle and um, so how do you approach the background for this? Well, I've already done a quick coloring last night of the um, like the actual subject. Let me just really quick and get myself situated here. So I'm going to just focus on the bottom part and um, obviously then you can go ahead and apply these principles to the entire page. So this is just a quick background demo. This is part of the background tutorial series that um, I've just started. So this is, um, I'm going to start you guys off. Um, so my whole plan for this, um, since it's like foresty mushrooms and stuff like that, I want to do like green at the bottom and then I'm going to fade up to blue at the top. So maybe I'll show you guys like the an L shape so the the bottom and one of the sides and then um, you guys can figure out um, you don't have to use the same colors that I use um, you can apply this technique to just about any type of frame with any type of color scheme um, I just wanted to show you because a couple of people have been asking me about this but I will show you my colors in case you want to copy and follow along so here is PC 992 light aqua and I love this color and I want this little mushroom area to be like brighter behind it so I'm gonna start off with just a very light light layer of this color Almost like a little glow behind the mushroom. So I quite like that. And while I may layer more layers later, you can see how it's really just starting to make that red really pop. Let's bring it in a little closer for you guys. So it's barely visible, but it, do it does bring out the red in that little cap there. So now I'm going to swap over to a color that I know and love very much that is PC 909 grass green and now I'm just going to get down in these little crevices and just sort of give it like a, a soft gradient so anywhere where it might be darker and I'm just using my best judgment. You don't have to be precise with this. <clears throat> but I figure anywhere that has something that might give it a shadow. Alright, so I quite like how that's starting to look. I'll also just fuzz out this spot here. I don't know why it's darker, but I'll just fuzz it out so it looks like it's intentional. Kind of bring it together with this bit. And I'll just take this right into the area over here. So this area here has a little leafy bit. So I'm going to make the green, this soft green layer, a little bit more amorphous and irregular in shape. 
So it almost feels like it could be leaves or something in the background. And that, I just achieve that by just doing little circles and ovals in random spots. <clears throat> and by just variating my pressure. And this automatically gives it a different feel. So I want the the background to feel very soft. Uh, so I'm doing it in very light pressure with many layers as opposed to heavy pressure with fewer layers. And that is just because I want to achieve the softness of like a fuzzed out blurry background. So that's my approach to this type of page. You don't have to do it exactly as I. However, that would be my way to go about these beautiful filigree frame pages. And I will fill each page with a different color background, obviously different feel, different color scheme. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this one felt very much um, like it needed a very good green and blue background. <laughs> okay. My little catty, kitty catty is very satisfied. You should see her. She is sleeping in my arms. Happy as can be. <clears throat> my cat likes it when I color because I hold her while I color. So she just is in heaven. Okay, so obviously last night I didn't quite finish this um, filigree border, but I figured I did enough of it to show you guys at least a quick background tutorial for how I do these really soft, fuzzed out backgrounds. They're really simple. They don't take a terribly long amount of time. I mean, you do need to pack some patience for the layering. You can see now here I'm going over several spots multiple times to kind of get the right effect that I'm going for. Okay, so now I have that little corner is covered, <clears throat> so that's a good little 
base layer. Alright, so now I'm just going to continue on with the green soft background. So again, just just to reiterate, like this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to layer several layers over this. So I can be a little bit messy. Just get the color down, have some fun. Don't have to worry about being perfect. And you'll find with me that I am rarely ever perfect with my coloring, and that's just fine. You don't have to be. Some people take the time to really do everything beautifully right off the bat. And that is amazing to me, and, and that's great for them, and I'm not bashing that at all. But sometimes for me, I just want to put the color on the paper. And I am not being f super fussy. So, in that situation, you can't be hard on yourself. You just gotta enjoy it. Now I always find that green and gold is a classic combo, so that's why I picked this. Same with gold and blue. Um, so, you will see that the main background colors that I'm picking are both green and blues. And that's primarily because of the subject matter, but also because it just looks so good with the gold. That gold filigree. Whoop! Camera went for a little ride there. All right, so that's the start. I'll zoom out so that you can see. This is the first layer, the bottom of that page. And I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back. You won't even know I'm gone. Okay, so um, at this point here, um, I have on one side I'm going to do more blue and on the other side I'm going to do more green. So I want this to feel like kind of like a leafy wall. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start just kind of drawing in some leafy shapes. Just along the edges. They don't have to be perfect. Nothing at this stage has to be perfect. Just to give an idea of how it will look. And this reminds me of Ivy. Which is great because the little girl's name in the book is Ivy.
So again, just doing a light layer of leafy shapes and also darkening up the, the area where they all kind of blend together. Okay, and because this looks sort of boxy, I'm also going to just sort of bring it out a little in some spots. Sort of like with some more background. Like it's further back in space, so they're smaller. All right, and now to complete that overall effect, what I'm gonna go in with is this PC919 non-photo blue. And now I'm going to go in around the edges Wherever there aren't leaves, and I'm also extending this up. So this is like the blue of the sky. Pardon my computer fan in the background, it is still processing that one video. But I figured I would record no new videos while I'm processing the old one. Why not? So you can see how I'm just gently laying that color down. With a light touch, getting in all the little nooks and crannies where I left the way of the paper. And getting a little bit more darker and heavier pressure the farther we get away from the text so the lighter areas are towards the text and the richer darker areas are next to the illustrations themselves this gives a really nice effect So you can see now, I'm just going to work in very soft, gentle layers. This is right up close to the text, so I'm going to be very soft and delicate. Just filling in any white of the paper, really. So it's a really subtle look, but overall I think quite nice.
So I'm just going to gently work this blue into the background here. So I'm going to kind of turn like a corner, kind of round it out. I'm using the flat side of the pencil and just going in very, very gentle, soft strokes. You can see I kind of work the same areas over and over until it gets the desired effect. And then I'll move over to the next bit. So again, remembering that closer to the subjects, I can have a nice, warmer, richer blue. As I blend it in with the green, it gives a really nice, pretty color. But then coming up closer to the text, I'm going to fade it out until it's nothing. And that has everything to do with pencil pressure. So I start out towards the bottom and the base, kind of medium pressure, going carefully. And then Sorry about that. And then as I come up towards the text, I get lighter and lighter, darker and darker as I go down towards the designs, even overlapping quite frequently with what's already there. So in this case, there was some nice green. So really this technique just takes some practice and again layering. And you can try this um, soft fuzzy look on just about any type of page that has this filigree look. And just remember to fade out as you get close to the text. It will give you a very nice professional look. So you see, I just lay down a very, 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 very light layer of color close to the text. Sort of just cover the whole area in general.
And then, then I go back over and kind of work in the darker blues until it kind of has this nice gradient look. And depending on how messy I am and how intricate the design is, I do have to slow down and take my time. Okay, so I'm just going to pull back a little so you can see the overall result, the whole effect in total. So you can see it gives a really nice, soft, fuzzy, faded outline look. Um, so it kind of borders the whole text. And the color comes right up to the text box in a very very light light handed way and then goes down to a deeper darker color as it goes away from the text box and towards the design and how I achieve that is with the same colors but just harder and harder pressure more layers and then over time it builds up into the desired color that you're looking for. So I can keep going and, um, you know, show you the finished result. Um, so I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it in time lapse. Um, I know that you guys aren't all a huge fan of time lapse. But I, I figure I've shown you the basics and principles and done it in real time. So now I'm going to show you the overall how um, how I finish it off and um, hopefully um, you will still get something out of it even though it is uh, time-lapse photography instead of um, real-time demo alright so thank you guys for watching at this point if you've watched this far I think you can go ahead and throw a like on this video and um, if this helped you in any way, then please comment and show me how, how you did and, and what pages um, you tried out with this technique and what the outcome was. And um, share it with everybody else too so that way um, we can all support you and give you a like. Um, and other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of this page in time-lapse photography. Alright, thanks, and I hope you have a magical time coloring. Bye! <laughs>
how I've just gradually over time built up the layers until I got the desired amount of color. Um, so, um, I hope that this video has been helpful for you and showing you how to make a simple faded out background for a filigree type style um, border. And um, there are many pages like this in Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, so hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, if it was, don't forget to hit like or subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye!